This lecture is on globalization and digital communication technology. In this lecture, we are going to look at the different ways in which digital communication technology is impacted by and has impacted what we understand globalization uh, to be. The two have a very symbiotic relationship and in this lecture what we're going to do is try to just explore some of those uh, engagements and what, what, what we can results from that. Now one of the key things we talk about is time space compression. This is the idea that the amount of time taken to cross a space, whether it's a physical space or a representational space, due to uh, digital communications technologies is compressed. And some uh, writers have argued that it is compressed to the point of uh, rendering geography irrelevant. You know, So you have writers that talk about globalization as being the end of geography or being the end of the tyranny of physical space. Digital communication technology allows us to move across these spaces in split seconds. So an example that we can use to understand this is that in traditional uh, communication, let's say if you wrote a letter, the amount of time it would take to cross a space, let's just say from uh, Melbourne to uh, the UK to London, if you wrote a letter you know, in the 1800s and you were going by ship, that would take three to four months. Then with the advent of airmail, uh, when the kangaroo route first started, that would take two weeks at the best, 10 days. And as the transport networks become more efficient and quicker, that time that is taken to cross that same amount of space, which in the 1800s was three to four months, in the mid 1900s was uh, 10 to 14 days is then reduced to a week uh, and then comes along something like uh, email and that time is reduced to nothing split seconds the idea here is that media as a storage medium or as a conduit for information the different types of media that you use have a severe impact of a very significant impact on the time space and the time taken to cross the space and digital technology particularly allows us to transverse those spaces in insanely quick amounts of time so this high level of connectivity and is very quick connections and uh, tr you know communication that happens means that that time space has been compressed to the point of no longer really being something to worry about so that is a key marker of globalization and uh, we definitely need communication, digital communication technology to make that happen. The next one we look at is time-space distanciation. This is an idea that says that social relations, whether we are forming with our family members, our communities, or people who share our interests, have with globalization and particularly digital communication technology have been disembedded or pulled out from physical space. You're no longer constrained by the materiality of physical space in order to have that social relation. So that is one of the key points uh, uh, that we use when we talk about digital communication technology and globalization. In traditional cultures, your ability to form social relationships might have been limited by how far you can walk, how far you can run, and over time, how far your horse could go, how far your carriages could go, how far you could cycle, and eventually have the internal combustion engine, railways, all those things determine the kind of social relationships you could have. And the medium, in that case, transport would determine how big your social network could be. With digital communication technology, you can have a social network that is pretty much global anywhere at any time, and you're no longer confined by your space. 
you can be fixed in one place but have social relations in a variety of different physical spaces. So this idea that your social relations and hence your community, uh, your society are no longer physically uh, fixed is known as time-space distanciation. The other one we want to talk about is the flows. So with this, uh, with, with the rise of digital communication technologies, we're seeing high levels of uh, flows between different countries, different areas, different centers. Uh, primarily these flows, when we first start looking at them, are economic flows, whether they're flows of goods or whether they're flows of services. So traditionally, once again, how far you could sell your goods or transport your goods would depend on the medium that you have, whether you're taking it across a ship or whether you're taking it across horseback and so on. Uh, and that would determine your economic flow. With digital technology, you're able to transport uh, goods of a certain kind, digital goods, across vast amounts of, of distances at very low cost which means we're now being able to move economic ideas and entities. When you're buying a, a Kindle book or an iTunes um, music or whether you are using an app to watch a video on YouTube, all of those uh, highly compressed time-space events uh, are an indication of the kind of economic flow that's going on. And linked to that economic flow, we start then looking at cultural flows. Because with these economic flows comes ideas, values, beliefs, and attitude. And they bring into whatever culture is receiving that information. And that raises the question of what happens when uh, an alien culture or a disembedded culture arrives at a local place. This is where we look at arguments around things like culture imperialism. If we look at American culture and, let's say, in particular, uh, its uh, Hollywood culture. Hollywood's impact on global cinema is tremendous. So there are arguments that a lot of formats these days mimic and ape uh, the Hollywood uh, cultural formats. And that means, you know, we can argue that as a form of cultural imperialism where the ideas of uh, a local culture are subsumed or modified by an, an alien culture or culture coming from outside. There's also arguments around cultural homogenization where we say that the influence of a global culture and particularly, uh, to use a Gramscian term, a hegemonic culture, in this case, let's say American culture, means that we start moving to all of us uh, behaving in that particular culture practice. Everybody starts looking the same, behaving the same, having the same cultural practices and habits. And we can see evidence of this in Australia with things like the importance of Hollywood films, the, you know, the, the fact that less Australian films are made, uh, the, the rise of things, celebrations like Halloween, which are quite alien to uh, the Australian culture. We see that cultural coming in. Uh, f and whether we look at it as imperialism or homogenization, it's definitely there. But that doesn't mean that local cultures passively receive and these, uh, these um, cultural flows. Uh, local cultures will have a responses to it or appropriations to that culture. So this is often known as globalization, a global reaction, uh, a globalization, a local reaction to a globalized uh, flow. Uh, this might be things like taking on rap music uh, and making it your own. So when you look at something like rap music, whether it's rap music in China or rap music in India, rap music in Indonesia, uh, it takes the form of rap music, appropriates it, but uses it to discuss localized issues. So that's a way of a local response to a global cultural flow. already covered this slide. The other thing we want to look at is the idea of what this means to the relationships and the communities that are out there. If your communities are traditionally embedded in a local geography and now you're being asked to, uh, or rather the impact of globalization and digital technology means that those local bonds, those local connections 
do get uh, weakened or do get compromised, if not at least are under threat. So this increased uh, connectivity and interdependence in the global arena has impacted traditional notions of community. Uh, whether the, you look at those uh, impacts as negative or whether you just look at those impacts as in the, you know, cultural flux, that's really a matter of perspective. But I think it's important to understand that these digital communication technologies and the impact of globalization is, un, you know, is, is quite dramatic on traditional uh, communities. It upsets traditional hierarchies, traditional ways of being in status quo. Uh, one of the simple ones to look at is the, the migrant worker populations that do remittances in countries like the Philippines, India, and so on. That really changes the power dynamic of that society. Uh, an interesting point is to look at the role of storytellers in traditional Indian culture being replaced by uh, Indian men working in the Gulf and so on, uh, replacing the centers of knowledge and authority within that particular culture. So when we talk about globalization and digital communication technology, we do see that they're quite closely interrelated. And as such, I would argue that globalization is very much a communicational concept and digital communication technology in particular, through its uh, time-space compression, you know, the destroying the tyranny of space, the disembedding of social relations, time-space distanciation, where you can have communities and societies that are no longer uh, con you know, de defined by location. You are looking at economic and cultural flows, uh, and these cultural flows, economic flows, allow more independence, or more growth, or a fairer distribution of wealth, or greater opportunity. But you also have cultural flows where you start looking at questions of the, uh, the destruction or modification of local culture uh, through an imperialistic uh, culture that's coming from outside. Uh, but there's also always the local response where we are looking at local cultures responding uh, to it. And all of this in in you know, cannot help but have an impact on the way societies are traditionally constructed uh, and whether they destabilize a society or create new opportunities uh, depends on a variety of other factors. So the point of this lecture is that when we think about digital communication technologies, we've got to consider the things that I've raised earlier and particularly understand that this is a continuum on globalization and globalization is very much a communicational concept. Thank you.